Hello, this is Waylon Chow. Welcome to the Constitution of Canada. This is the first of a three-part series. In this first part, we'll first look at the history behind the creation and evolution of the Canadian Constitution, and then explain what exactly is a Constitution, or more specifically, how does the Constitution create our system of government? And lastly, we'll look at the rules for amending the Constitution. Let's go over a very brief history of what led to the Constitution of Canada and, and how it has changed over the years. We start back in 1864, so at that time, Canada was still a colony of the United Kingdom. So this is a painting of the uh, Fathers, or what's called the Fathers of Confederation, at the very center there, uh, near the center, standing up is the first Prime Minister of Canada, Sir John, a., Sir John A. Macdonald. So this is the Fathers of Confederation getting together uh, to discuss and agree to uh, you know, the terms of Confederation, making Canada into an independent country. Now, because Canada was, uh, was merely a colony of the UK, they had to then get the UK Parliament to pass legislation to make Canada into an independent country. So that, that piece of British legislation is called the British North America Act or BNA Act uh, for short. So it, it applied to, as, as you can see from the title, uh, to the Union of Canada, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. So Canada refers to uh, Upper Canada, which we now know as Ontario, uh, Lower Canada, which we now know as Quebec, and Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Those are the four original provinces of Canada. And once Parliament approved the BNA Act, uh, Queen Victoria gave her royal assent to the BNA Act and issued a royal proclamation uh, proclaiming that Canada was now one dominion under the name of Canada. So here's a map of Canada as it was uh, at the beginning on July 1st, uh, 1867. So the, the, uh, the lands that are in sort of light beige color, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia is what constituted Canada at, at, the, at the very beginning on July 1st, 1867. You'll notice that Ontario, Quebec uh, is much smaller than what it is now. So over, over the years, Canada has expanded to uh, a much larger territory uh, that is what we see uh, today with the uh, ten, 10 provinces from coast to coast to coast and also uh, three territories, the Yukon Territory, uh, Northwest Territory and, and Nunavut. Now the next major uh, change uh, in terms of the Canadian Constitution was in 1982 because if you uh, if, I, if you recall I just m mentioned that the BNA Act, the British North America Act, uh, was a piece of British legislation, an act of the British Parliament, and the BNA Act uh, was the Canadian Constitution for many years. So that that piece of British legislation was our Canadian Constitution. I guess it wasn't really Canadian. And that's why in 1982, our then Prime Minister uh, repatriated our Constitution to Canada. So, in, so what that meant was to make our Constitution now uh, a piece of Canadian legislation instead of British uh, legislation. So you, hear, you see in this picture, uh, sitting at the table on the left, is uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who was the the Prime Minister at that time, so he's the you know, father of Justin, just in case you didn't know, and, uh, and signing uh, the, uh, the new constitution is uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, II. So what, so what she was signing uh, was uh, the new constitution, which is made up of two uh, acts of Parliament. We have the Constitution Act, 1867, and the Constitution Act of 1982. So the Constitution Act 1867 is essentially the BNA Act uh, renamed. You know, renamed, uh, but now is a piece of Canadian legislation instead of British legislation. And what was added to the Constitution most notably was the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is contained 
in the Constitution Act 1982. Let's now explain what is a constitution, or in other words, how does the constitution create our current system of government that we know in Canada? So here's our beautiful country as we know it today, and let's imagine our country being this you know, one big house. And within this house are our various governments. We have the federal government or federal parliament that is located in Ottawa, which enacts laws that are applicable throughout Canada. And we also have our provincial governments in the form of provincial legislatures in each of the 10 provinces. So what built this house? Or in other words, you know, what created this, you know, these, these, uh, these two different levels of government? So we look to the, the BNA Act, or what is now known as the Constitution Act 1867. So there are specific sections that created you know, these 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 different uh, governments. So there is section 17 which created the Parliament uh, for Canada and there are three other sections which created the legislative assemblies for each of the four original provinces of Canada being Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. So now that now that these governments uh, have been created by the Constitution Act 1867 we, we now need to look at you know, what are the house rules. We have this house. So what, what are governments able to do or not do? What are the rules that, that, determine, that determine that? The first set of rules, or the, the, the overall general rule rather, is contained in the Constitution Act 1982. So there it says that the Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of Canada uh, which means that any law that's passed by any government in Canada has to be consistent with the rules in the Constitution. If, the, if any law is not consistent with the Constitution, then that law can be declared to be invalid, or in other words, of no force or effect. So what are these specific rules within the Constitution? The first major set of rules is called the Division of Lawmaking Powers or Division of Powers, uh, for short. And that's found, those, those rules are found in the Constitution Act 1867. So, so there are specific sections in there uh, which have like a list of powers that are allocated to the federal parliament and a different list of powers that are allocated to the provincial legislatures. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk more in depth about the division of lawmaking powers in, in the next part, in the next, in the next video. The other, the other set of rules that determine what governments can or cannot do in the Constitution is the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So this, this was added in 1982 to our Constitution. The, and the role of the Charter is essentially to restrict the ability of government. So when, when governments are exercising their lawmaking powers under the Constitution Act 1867, in that, in that exercise, they cannot contravene basic rights and freedoms that are protected by the Charter. And we'll talk about the Charter more in depth in part three. If we ever want to change or amend the Constitution, there are specific rules in the Constitution which set out the requirements that need to be met. Those rules are often referred to as the amending formula. The amending formula requires that any amendment needs to be approved by both the federal parliament. So remember the federal parliament is made up of the House of Commons and the Senate. So both of those houses of parliament need to approve of the amendment. And the second requirement is the approval of the legislatures of at least two thirds of the provinces that have at least 50% of the population of Canada. So let's unpack that second requirement. So we need the approval of at least two thirds of the provinces. There are 10 provinces. So we need at least seven provinces to approve of an amendment. And those, those provinces that approve of the amendment the total population of those provinces 
have to have to, has to be at least 50 percent of the total population of Canada. So you can see very quickly based on this amending formula that at the very at the very least no one no one government whether it be federal or provincial in Canada can on its own amend the constitution. There has to be some high level of consensus within the country to have an amendment to the constitution. So based, you know, if you look at the map here, I've put in the percentage population figures for each of the provinces. So if you do some very quick and rudimentary math, you know, you'll realize that to be able to, to satisfy that 50% of the population requirement, we need the approval of at least either Ontario or Quebec for any constitutional amendment to be successful. If both of those provinces, both Ontario and Quebec, do not approve of a constitutional amendment, it's just not possible based on these current uh, census figures to be able to meet that 50% population requirement. 